In 2021, plug-in car sales hit 2.3 million and we hit the tipping point for Europe and the history of the automobile will never, ever be the same as a result. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to the channel, you new subscribers. Welcome back. Everyone else, great to have you here. Who was the winner? In 2021, without a doubt, Winner was the Tesla Model 3. No, not really true. Actually, a number of brands won. Volkswagen did very well. Tesla did well. Renault did surprisingly well with the Renault Zoe, which I think is a um, pretty subpar vehicle for the price it costs. But obviously, a lot of people disagree with me, and that's fine. At least those people are driving an electric car versus a gas or diesel-powered vehicle. So that's good news. Now, there's an article on Inside EVs talking about these numbers. I'm going to share that with you, but the article is a little bit misleading. In fact, I read the end of it and I was like, what? Hang on, this doesn't sound right. And then I realized that, yeah, what was really going on. So I'm going to share with you what's actually going on. Now, Mark Kane reports for Inside EVs that passenger plug-in electric car sales in Europe continued to expand quickly, achieving a strong December and a record annual result of 2.27 million in 2021 now i've got to state this is not pure purely electric cars of those 2.27 million many of them are plug-in hybrids but the percentage of plug-ins which are electric significantly increased or fully electric significantly increased in 2022 versus 2021 what does this mean the same trend is going on in china but this the this trend has actually happened a lot faster in China. People have transitioned to elect fully electric cars versus plug-in hybrids much, much quicker over there. More than 80% of the Chinese plug-in market is fully electric. It's a lot less than that in Europe. The key reason being cost. In China, you can easily find an electric car on parity in terms of cost with a plug-in hybrid or an ICE vehicle. So what's the what do people do? Naturally, they say, well, why would I pay the same amount for a plug-in? hybrid when I can buy a fully electric car for the same price. It doesn't add up. Now that will happen in Europe. That will continue to happen. You'll you'll see we'll get over the next few years, we're going to get to the point where plugins will make up a very, very tiny share of the market worldwide for this exact reason. Electric car costs will come down. Let's have a look at December first. What were the sales figures in December? December was a very challenging month for car manufacturers. Now it's claimed the reason for this is due to chip shortages. As I've told you before, I don't believe that is true anymore. In fact, I strongly believe that is made up. And I think that in the future, at some point in time, we'll all discover that. One of the key reasons for this, there's a number of reasons I believe this, but one of the key reasons for this is I don't see how it's possible for all these new startups to be increasing their sales by 400% if they can't get access to chips. Yeah, so I'm sure that that was an issue at some point during the year. But to say it still is, I don't think it's really the key issue here. But... It is true that overall car sales declined by 22% year over year in Europe. I think that's got something to do with the pandemic, though, to some degree. Nonetheless, plug-in electric cars basically maintained their volume from a year ago. So that means they increased their market share by a significant percentage. According to EV Volumes data shared by Jose Pontes in December, 280,241 new passenger plug-in electric cars were registered which is on par with December 2020. But because December 2020 was heavily inflated by the rush to lower the average CO2 emissions for vehicle fleets, we can see that December 2020 was an aberration. Because of the decrease in overall car sales in December of 2021, plug-in vehicles captured a new record of 29% market share, almost 30% market share. It's actually not that far from 30% to 95%. People just don't realize how these things work. I think you'll find that that's going to happen within probably four years. Probably four years. A lot of people are predicting this, by the way. It's not just me. I know I've sounded insane over the last six, seven, eight months with my predictions, even though most of them have been pretty close to ballpark correct. But now a lot of people are joining me in the insanity and saying that getting from this 30% now to 95% within four years is actually very, very possible. Now, interesting. According to the report, all electric cars accounted for roughly two thirds of the total plug-in volume in December. Two thirds, in other words, about 66% of all plug-in cars were fully electric. That's an all-time record for electric vehicles in Europe, 
period. Electric vehicles in December of 2021, 181,641 sales. Plug-in hybrids, 98,600 for a total of 280,000. So what about from January to December? For the whole year, plug-ins made a 19% market share. My estimate this year is we're gonna see potentially a 40% market share. In 2021, 2.27 million, nearly 2.3 million new passenger plug-in electric cars were registered in Europe. That includes fully electric cars and plug-in hybrids. That's a 66% increase compared to 1.37 million units in 2020. 66% increase. That's a pretty big number. If we see another 66% increase, we're going to get to over 3.5 million plug-in sales in Europe. And with at least 70% of those being fully electric, that's going to mean well, it's not that far to go until we get to that 90, 95% number. Now, thanks to the strong second half of the year, the average plug-in electric car market share in 2021 improved to 19%, including 10% for all electric cars and this way, right? Electric car sales are increasing as percent increasing as... What does this mean? One in five new cars were rechargeable in 2021, and one in 10 was purely electric. To compare them, these numbers to 2020, which is important to do to give us context, right? In 2020, plug-in share stood at 11%, while in 2019, it was 3.6%. So we've gone from 3.6 to 11 to 20. So next up, seems likely 40 would be next, right? Now, as I mentioned before, Tesla has pretty well nailed down the top position here. The Tesla Model 3 was the top electric car model both in December and in 2021. In December, the Model 3 had 27,455 new registrations up 11%, not far from the all-time monthly record for any model ever, which was set by the ID3, the Volkswagen ID3, at 28,000 in December of 2020. This result allowed Tesla to become the most registered model overall in Europe for the month of December. So I'm just gonna repeat that so you understand. The highest selling vehicle of any fuel type, period, in 28 countries in Europe, in December of 2021 was the Tesla Model 3. I think that's actually remarkable. And one of the key reasons for that is I believe the price of Tesla's vehicles will decline over the next few years significantly, mostly as a result of enhanced manufacturing procedures and techniques, but also as a result of actually building the vehicles in Germany, not having to ship them from China to Germany. I also think it'll be a result of using of Tesla using LFP batteries in more of its cars as it starts to use. I think eventually Tesla will use LFP battery chemistry in its 4680 cells, significantly reducing the cost to manufacture those cells. But anyway, let's move on to the rest of the report. In the whole of 2021, the Model 3 had 143,000 sales, which is the 17th best result overall for any vehicle in Europe across 28 countries in Europe best in the midsize class period, and the best among plugins. The Tesla Model 3 was number one among plugins in 2019 and number two in 2020 behind the Renault Zoe. Now, the second most registered model in December was the Renault Zoe with 11,400 sales, which was enough to overtake in the final month the Volkswagen ID3 in rankings for the year. The Renault Zoe is the second most popular electric car in 2021, with 72,562 reservations. So how have Tesla been able to beat the Renault Zoe and also clearly easily beat the Volkswagen ID3? One of the key reasons is manufacturing vehicles in China en masse. In particular, also starting to use cheap, plentiful lithium iron phosphate batteries, which by the way, they're not just cheap. I think they're actually better than NCA and NCM chemistry batteries, but you know, just watch my channel and I talk about why, the reasons why on numerous occasions on different videos. That's one of the key reasons, right? Simply being able to manufacture them. Volkswagen didn't put in place the necessary ability to manufacture cheap vehicles at scale or relatively cheap vehicles at scale. Tesla has reduced, has revealed its cost to build electric cars for all of 2021. I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about their actual cost to build an EV. Speaking of the ID3, it had a low result of 6,000 or 5,926 sales in December, but still in the top 10, it closed the year in third place with 69,567 registrations, just behind 
the Renault Zoe. In fourth place was the year was the Volkswagen ID4, which had 55,000 total sales. In fifth place was the Kia Nero EV with 46,705 sales. In sixth place was the Ford Cougar plug-in hybrid with 46,448 sales. In seventh place was the Fiat 500 electric, 44,500 sales. That's quite a good result for Fiat for their pretty cool little 500 e-electric car. Bit expensive though. In eighth place was the Skoda Enyaq with 44,400 sales. In ninth was the Hyundai Kona Electric with 43,415. And in 10th, the Volvo XC40 plug-in hybrid with 42,492 sales. I suspect that if Ford had electric versions of the their plug-in hybrid Cougar, then sales of that would probably outnumber the FEV version. Probably the same for the Volvo XC40 plug-in hybrid. I know Volvo does sell the XC40 Recharge. They just don't sell a lot of them, meaning there's just not a lot of choice. Right now in Europe, there is huge backlog for all of these companies for their EVs. You have to wait quite a while to get any of these EVs. Now, that depends on the country. So some of you might say, yeah, yeah, yeah Viking. No, no, no. In my country of Azerbaijan or I don't know, wherever you're from, uh, we can get ours in a week. That might be true. But I'm talking about generally across the continent of Europe, 28 countries, that these sales numbers come from. And in fact, all over across Europe, the reality is that in most countries, for most EVs, almost probably all of their cars on this list, demand is very, very high. Supply is pretty low. So one of the great things about next or about this year is that Volkswagen and in particular Tesla and other car companies as well are ramping up their electric vehicle production significantly. That should be able to ease off that demand I think demand will still be enormous this year in spite of this increased manufacturing. But that should help. And the other thing that's happening is China is starting to bring their EVs to Europe this year. That's going to be fascinating to see what happens this year. The final part of this report is also quite confusing. I'm going to share with you why and why I think potentially inside EVs could change this to reflect what's, you know, not confuse people. It says top automotive groups in 2021. Here are the top automotive groups by plug-in electric car sales volume in Europe. It says Volkswagen Group has a 24% share, Stellantis a 13% share, Daimler a 10% share, BMW Group a 10% share, Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance a 10% share, and the Hyundai Motor Group, something less than that, they were in sixth place. Well, a lot of this report, it's hard to understand which parts are referring to plug-in hybrids and EVs, which parts are just referring to EVs, and which parts are referring to uh, everything, both. So, these numbers here are reflective of plug-in hybrid and EV sales. And that's why Tesla doesn't rank in the top six, because they don't sell any plug-in hybrids. However, Tesla had a 7% share if you include plug-in hybrids in 2021. But if you don't, then Tesla's share was around 13%. 13% of electric cars, that is, in Europe. So the question is here, will Tesla increase that number or will it decrease? Volkswagen, will they increase their share or will it decrease? I'm not too sure, but I know for a fact that Tesla's going to have to sell a lot more electric cars this year, principally for the key reason of supply, being able to manufacture thousands of thousands more cars, but also continue to bring in the cheaper LFP versions from China, which will continue to happen. 2.27 million EVs in 2021, including plug-in hybrids, but the majority of those were EVs, and that is changing. In 2022, I think the percentage of plug-in hybrids Versus EVs, I think EVs will be 70% of the total. So it's only going to get better and better. Hats off to Europe, well done, on getting the EV ball going fast. Europe definitely helped push EVs globally with their emissions standards and with enforcing fines on companies that don't meet them. That was a huge part of the reason that we are in this position that we're in today. We've passed the tipping point. That is the great news. Thanks for watching the channel, and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.